Let's turn our attention back to the economic news this week. Big number yesterday on the unemployment rate, falling to 3.7%. The Shadow Treasurer, Angus Taylor, joins me. Thanks for your time. Good news that the unemployment rate is down, but does it mean that we have to wait longer for rate cuts? Well, of course, we all want to see low unemployment, as we've seen for a long time, Kieran. Uh, but uh, it's little consolation for Australians who are facing a cost of living crisis, who are struggling to pay their bills, who are having to take on extra work in order to pay their bills, pay their mortgages, which have increased by remarkable amounts. We've seen a 7.5% reduction in uh, Australian standard of living since Labor came to power. And so uh, low unemployment is good, but uh, we've got a much bigger problem right now, uh, which is that Australians just can't afford the standard of living they've had in the past. And there's clearly no plan to restore that standard of living to where it should be and where it was before Labor came to power. It's a bit of a claim to fame, though, for the government, isn't it? Over half a million jobs created since they were elected. Well, we've had seen a population increase of over a million, so you would expect some extra jobs to come along with that kind of population increase. And this is part of the problem, Kieran. Part of the reason why our standard of living has collapsed is our economy uh, has stagnated. So GDP per capita recession, what does that mean in practice? Australians are experiencing a recession. Uh, the economy is going backwards for them. 18 years since we've seen this kind of stagnation outside of the the, the pandemic. Um, and that's a, a rem remarkably bad situation that most Australians are facing. Um, they're, they're responding to it in a number of ways. They're responding, first of all, by working harder and taking on second jobs or a record number of people with a second job to try and just make ends meet. Uh, they're digging deep into their savings. Uh, we've got many small business people who are effectively working in their small business uh, without taking pay. Uh, we're hearing that from the software providers. They've never seen anything like this. And they're cutting back on not only discretionary spending, but in some cases, non-discretionary spending. And that's a lot of pain being felt by Australians. We saw a uh, record immigration set of immigration numbers yesterday. Uh, only one house for every four, one new house for every four immigrants. We've got a housing crisis which is being exacerbated by government policy. Uh, and these policies are out of whack here and they're just not working. Uh, and there's clearly no plan to get us back and restore the standard of living we were used to. If the unemployment rate, though, does stay at these levels and the RBA achieves its goal of getting inflation back into the target band of 2 to 3%, that's, that's the definition of a soft landing, isn't it? Well, it's not a soft landing if you've had a collapse in your standard of living. And this is the problem, Kieran. Um, the only thing driving our economy right now is immigration. If you took away immigration, the economy is in deep recession. Um, and so uh, I don't think there's any consolation in any of this for the average Australian family who's working harder, saving less, uh, and with less purchasing power in their pay packets. Um, so there's, there's really no consolation. What we need is a plan, a pathway forward to restore Australian standard of living. That means getting industrial relations right, and that's been heading in the wrong direction. It means aligning immigration policy with housing policy, and that's clearly not the case at the moment. I mean, one new house for every four new Australians, come on, that's just not worth it. Uh, and you only have to look around Sydney now to see how badly it's not working. Uh, so uh, Labor's policies are not aligned with the circumstances and the challenges we face, uh, and Australians are paying a high price for that. A, a lot of it comes out of the university sector with international students and so on. It's mm. one of our biggest export uh, export markets, isn't it? So it's that, that balancing act, isn't it? You, you don't want to smash the tertiary sector and, say, reduce the amount of students coming in because it props up so much of our higher education. What's... What's your solution to that? Well, can I say, this is not about uh, being against immigration. It's about making sure that your immigration levels and your housing levels and the rest of the services and infrastructure you need are aligned. That's what it's about. And we're seeing a housing crisis where not enough new houses are being built um, at a time when we've got record levels of immigration. Well, that's just not sustainable. It's common sense this stuff, Kieran. It's not complicated. I think most Australians 
uh, in the suburbs and the regions right across this great country understand that something's out of whack. Uh, and it is. You see it in the numbers. We saw it in the numbers that came out yesterday. And I think uh, Labor just doesn't get it. Uh, and I don't think they ever will because it's just not that they, they don't see these common sense principles that, that I see uh, Australians understanding every day. Do you think it's a good thing, just finally, we've seen the meeting between Paul Keating and, and the Chinese Foreign Minister, the, the other talks between the PM and the Foreign Minister with our largest trading partner. Is it is it good that that's back on an even keel, uh, albeit with a couple of niggles here and there with, as I say, the, the Keating meeting? That's a one side. Do you welcome the fact that those conversations are being had? I know Mr Dutton also met with Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Yeah, we strongly support a strong trade relationship with China. I mean, our agriculture sector, our resources sector, you talk about great export sectors. I mean, they're phenomenal export sectors for this country. and We all benefit from them. And uh, China has been an enormously important trading partner for those sectors for uh, particularly the last couple of decades and will continue to be and should be, and we should continue to nurture that. But we always need to make sure... Uh, that we, uh, we 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 set the line in the sand as to what what is acceptable and what's not, and as long as Labor is doing that, we'll always support strengthening those trade relationships. Kieran, that is a that is a good thing, um, and it shouldn't be intermingled with other issues around immigration. I mean, immigration is a is an issue about getting the balance right um, and making sure that Australians accept. Uh, a strong immigration policy that we've always had because it is aligned uh, with uh, the housing we have available and the services we have available.